Hello everyone, welcome to today's class and in today's class we are going to discuss forensic biology. Really very important, it is a branch of forensic science. So as I have told you earlier that we had three main branches of forensic science earlier. It was forensic biology, forensic chemistry and forensic physics. An entire forensic science was inside these three branches. Now we have multiple branches and specialization but we will discuss those branches and specializations related to forensic science later. But in today's class, we are going to learn what forensic biology is and what are the different subdivisions which comes under forensic biology. So let's start with introduction. So forensic biology is the application of biology. As I already told you that anything which comes with forensic is related with law and it is related with law administration. So forensic biology is the application of biology. So application of uh, principles of biology, instruments of biology, knowledge of biology in the law or you can say in the uh, administration of justice is forensic biology. So it says forensic biology is the application of biology to law enforcement. Same thing you can say law enforcement, you can say justice administration, you can say related to law and all that. It includes sub-disciplines. So we have multiple sub-disciplines related with forensic biology. It's forensic anthropology, forensic botany, forensic entomology and limenology. So everything is really very important is again connected with forensic biology. You can understand that forensic biology uh, like overall biology which comes with forensic is related with living things. Okay. So it is related with organisms. You can say it could be plants or it could be animals. Anything which is living. Okay. So we have forensic botany as well. So it comes under forensic biology overall. So forensic serology is there. Forensic odontology is there. Life, wildlife forensics is there in DNA forensics. So everything comes under forensic biology. Forensic biology has been used to prove a suspect was at a crime scene. So like you can say anything, let's say um, biological evidence or you can say uh, chemical evidence or you can say physical evidence. Every evidence is used to prove that some suspect was at a crime scene. But here if we are talking about forensic biology, we are using biological things to prove if a suspect was there at a crime scene or not. We can identify illegal products from endangered species. So all those animals which comes under endangered species, their skin is really very, um, or you can say expensive and it gets sold in um, dark market in very high prices. So because of money gain, people kill those animals and for their financial gain. So we can identify the illegal products with the help of forensic biology of endangered species. We can solve crime by matching crime scene evidences to suspect. Okay, so um, I should say forensic science is really very related or it depends on comparison. It's a huge, um, like you can say, it's a huge part of forensic science. So whatever evidence we got from crime scene, we try to compare it with suspected uh, samples, you can say, or suspected evidences, you can say. So if we are having, uh, let's say, blood samples, or let's say, I'm talking about biological evidences only. So let's say uh, blood evidence, or let's say uh, sweat, or urine, or saliva, or uh, anything, let's say. So if it's there in the crime scene, we will analyze that, and we will try to compare, we'll try to compare it with suspected evidences or suspect people, okay? So that's how it works. So forensic science is again really very like closely related with comparative study. So it worked like that. Okay, apart from that, we can even investigate a plane crashes and um, the real reason behind plane crash, a bird strike the plane or not. So everything comes under forensic biology. Now we have some subdivisions in forensic biology like serology or hematology. Here we have forensic botany, then we have forensic entomology, then we have, okay, it's repeated. Forensic entomology and this is forensic, uh, okay, so this is forensic DNA analysis. Please recorrect this, DNA, forensic DNA evidence or let's say analysis. It's better now. Okay, so fine. So first branch here we have is forensic serology or hematology. 
so if you will see this word with some attention here you can say hematology is related with study of heme or hemoglobin which is like directly related with blood or in blood we can say rbcs because we have hemoglobin in rbcs only okay so that's why hematology is related with the study of blood logy is scientific study so scientific study of red blood cells or scientific study of blood serology is something which is related with body fluids okay any body fluid any body fluid will come under forensic serology okay so it's a biological material so overall it comes under the umbrella of forensic biology serology is the scientific study of serum and other body fluids okay so because of serum it got the name serology and any other body fluid comes under this so all the other body fluid comes under serology as well so it is the study of serum study of body fluid scientific study i must say because l o g y like stands for or it expresses scientific study of something hematology is the study of morphology and physiology of blood you can say origin of species okay this is the example you can say so this is the example so morphology and physiology is related with the structure and function structure and function of blood so hematology is related with the structure and function of your blood cells here we can identify origin of species with the help of serology or hematology we can identify if the blood is of human or not or is of some animal or not we can identify blood group we can identify blood we can identify bar body so with the help of bar bodies we can identify if if the blood is of female uh, human or male human right detection of blood facilitates identification of some person blood grouping is again done for the comparative uh, identification of suspects and the suspected blood sometimes what happened for example i killed someone so in the process of killing i got blood all over on my clothes okay it's not my blood because i am the person who is attacking the other person so because of that attack the victim's blood is on me and now i want to wash this cloth or i just want to hide it somewhere so so whenever the investigative team will recover this cloth piece it is really very important to identify the blood type the blood group which is present on the cloth which is present on the piece of cloth or if we identify the type of blood or the blood group which is present on the cloth piece and then we compare this blood group with the suspected person if it, so if if the blood group matches or the other if the blood group matches or if the blood matches i'll be in serious trouble because those clothes are mine and i am somehow related with the crime so that's how we compare like most of the time this is the simple way of comparison an example i say an example i said an example so this is how so this is how it works now we have forensic botany forensic botany whenever we apply the knowledge of botany to solve some crime or to administer law or to uh, facilitate law or to facilitate justice it will be forensic botany so forensic botanists look to the plant so forensic botanists look to the plant life in order to gain information regarding the possible crimes so most of the times we have a crime scene so most so so many times we got crime scenes in in the forest areas or in some backyard or in some uh, um you can say or in some other places where we have a lot of plants and uh, we have a lot of plants so here forensic botany comes so really very so it really so it is really very important we identify leaves she so so it is really very important that we identify different type of leaves different type of seeds different type of pollen grains which found on the body or on the crime scene so let's say so uh, so here we can make a scenario for example i killed someone again so the dead body is on some the dead body is on the dead so so for example i kill someone again so this time i want to discard that dead body in some forest area so that no one can uh, found so that no one can 
so that no one can get that dead body so for example i took that dead body and i i took that dead body and i kept that dead body in the backyard of my so for ex for example i killed someone again and now this time in forest so because of that forest so for example i killed someone again and this time it's on so for example i killed someone again so this time we are in a forest so here we have a lot of leaves seeds pollen grains pollen grains are really very important evidences because we are not able to see them like with the help of our naked eyes so these are tiny 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 evidences which we get in the which we get on the dead body which we get which we get on crime scene or which we get on suspects and they don't even realize it that's why it is really very important uh, we have to understand we have to identify leaf seed pollen different type of pollen grains 